Hello, God bless you. Welcome to our daily video where we take a daily look at the Bible verse. Just like we get hungry, we make time to feed ourselves, our physical bodies. We also need to make time to feed our spiritual bodies. We do that by reading the Bible, getting along with God, spending time with Him in prayer, and reading His Word, the Bible. You can read a free Bible app on the various websites or a physical copy of the Bible. We give you a verse of the day, an appetizer, as I like to call it, with some discussions, because we hope that in the discussions you will open up your Bible, you read the word for yourself, because the Bible is the bread of life. It feeds your spiritual body, you know, because we all have a, this void that we try to fill. And yeah, a lot of people try to fill it with what the world has to offer. Sex, drugs, money, alcohol, whatever it may be. But the Word of God can feed you. Fill that void in your life. Because you're on this walk. We need more of God. We don't need to let the world take any anything into our our daily lives. We need to let, allow the Lord to minister to us. With all the deception in the world, the Bible is the only truth that there is. So you need to read your Bible, see God's face, pray to Him, let Him fill you with this Holy Spirit, let Him fill you with that living water. Today we're going to be in a beautiful verse in Lamentations, chapter 3. And I pray that this blesses you if you got your Bibles open up to Lamentations chapter 3. Or follow on the screen. It says Lamentations 3, 24. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Isn't that beautiful? It is always good to trust God, especially when things bad happen to us. You know, I said this yesterday. I read this to you and I think it's absolutely beautiful. The bottom line is to pray. If you're tired, sick, emotionally overwhelmed, pray. If you're on cloud nine and life seems to be perfect, pray. If you don't lack direction in your life, pray. If you doubt that prayer makes a difference, pray. If the circumstances of your life are out of control, pray. If the circumstances in your life seem to be going well and everything's within your control, pray even harder. Whatever you do and in everything you do, pray. I think that's absolutely so beautiful. Because it doesn't matter what we're going through in this world. The ups and the downs. We need to keep our eyes on the Lord. You know, that's what a lot of people do when they're in the downs of this world. Their eyes are fixed in the Lord. When they're down on this, in this world, they cry out, looking for an answer. Why is this happening to me? But we need to also look for the Lord when everything is going good. Because, you know, when we get ourselves on the mountain, there's this song I, that we sing at church that I love. And it says, The God of the mountain is still God of the valley. Because, you know, when we're down in the valley, when we're going through a trial, tribulation, temptation, wherever it may be, when you've got something going on, and you know what I'm talking about. I mean, I'm talking about maybe you're battling addiction, maybe depression, sickness, disease. Maybe you're dealing with sadness or you're mourning someone. Maybe you're trying to pay the bills, trying to put food on the table. You know, those towns when you're down in the valley, when you feel like the world just, the walls are just closing in around you. That's when people like to pray. And then they get through it, and they're up on the mountain. And they soon forget who got them on the mountain. God's the one that got them up on that mountain. So whatever you're going through, Keep praying to him. Keep thanking him for what he's doing. 
pray to him and seek his face and read his word. That's the most important thing we do is pray and read God's word. With everything we got going on. It says here, the Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. That means that anything that we got that we're going through, uh, good or bad, we're hoping for, you know, we're, we have our faith and trust in the Lord. We know that the Lord has our best interest and he's going to do right by us. So put your faith and trust in the Lord today. Well, I pray this message blessed you. God loves you so much. You are not alive by accident. You were created for a purpose. God did not create you just to fill the earth with people, just to take up space. And much like any good parent, God only wants the best for you. God has a plan for you. When God formed you in your mother's womb, God had a plan for your life. You know, we all have this void in our life. Some call a God-shaped hole, a missing puzzle piece. You try to fill it with everything that the world has to offer. Sex, drugs, alcohol, money, friendship, power, popularity, houses, cars, money. But nothing can fill that void, only God. That's why they call it a God-shaped hole. That void is there because we all sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. There's none of us that are righteous, not one. That void, that sin is there because we live in a fallen world. Jesus is coming back to set up his earthly kingdom. And the requirement to enter this kingdom is that we must be absolutely perfect and without sin. But no one is without sin. We all mess up. We all miss the mark. We all sin. Sin means to break God's rules, neither thoughts or actions. We see here in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No one is perfect. No one, not one. We see that in Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no not one. That's echoed in Ecclesiastes 7.20. For there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. In 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 10 say, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. In verse 10 says, If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So we're... Deceiving ourselves and calling God a liar if we say that we're perfect and don't sin. And there's a punishment for our sin. We see that in Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We all face eternal judgment and separation from God. This is why we must receive Jesus into our life as Lord. And believing what Jesus did is the greatest gift that we'll ever receive. It's a free gift of God of of eternal life not about works no one can be saved by their own works you cannot be a good enough person we see here in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 it says for by grace ye are saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is a free gift of God not of works lest any man should boast in Galatians 2 16 knowing that the man is not justified by the works of the law but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. We will never live long enough to even begin to pay for our salvation. Here's a word picture for you. If you don't accept Jesus' free gift, his get out of jail free card, and you stay in that spiritual jail cell. And the jailer opens the door and says that you're free to go. Someone paid your bail. But you're relying on your works. Thinking you could be a good person. So you stay in that cell thinking that you can get your own way to heaven. That you doubt that there's only one way. That you think you can find your own way. Saying, no, I'm good. I'm a good person. God wouldn't send me to hell. I can get myself out of here. But you can never be good enough. So don't deny this free get out of jail ticket. You can still escape the spiritual jail cell. Because as you see, sin separates us from God. Not only does sin separate us from God, it's a valley gets deeper and wider with each sin. And that sin valley gets wider and deeper with every sin. So it separates us from God and man. You see how man is further from God now. Now the only way to atone for that sin and for God to fill that void in your life is by the shedding of blood. See it there, Hebrews 9.22. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. 
You see, in the Old Testament, they would use the blood of an animal sacrifice. The animal sacrifice was a temporary bridge to God. Once they sinned again, they would have to offer another animal. Because as they sinned, that valley would get deeper and wider. And see, what, look at what happens. It causes the bridge to collapse. God knows that we can never be good enough. That's why Jesus came and died on the cross. Jesus is the only one who lived a perfect life and became the substitute for our sins. Jesus always existed. Jesus is God. Jesus left his throne in heaven. He became flesh. He wasn't an angel. He wasn't a ghost. He wasn't a prophet. He was flesh and blood and moan. Fully God and fully man. He lived a perfect sinless life. Jesus came to the earth to die for all of us. Jesus was crucified on a cross. Died a brutal death. Was buried in a tomb. He was in that tomb for three days and three nights. And then he rose from the dead. Proving that he is God because death and the grave had no power over him. Jesus took our place. Suffered God's wrath for us. The punishment that we all deserve. We've seen the wages of sin is death. We're guilty for our sins. We deserve the punishment. But the punishment was poured out on Jesus. God gave his son to the world to die in our place. Jesus paid God's price for our sins when he died on the cross. And our sins were nailed to the cross. Jesus nailed our sins to the cross with him. Jesus shed his precious blood for our sins. And Jesus' blood covered those sins so that we don't have to die. Jesus was sinless. He was an innocent of death. I mean, like any innocent man wrongfully arrested, Jesus died for us because of our sin, because we're guilty. We deserve God's wrath. The wages of sin is death. But Jesus loves us enough to die for us. Jesus is truly the only way to the Father. Or you see, John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Because Jesus was perfect and never sinned, he was the only one worthy to pay the price for our sins. And just like the animal sacrifice had to be completely perfect with no spot, no blemish, no defect. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. Paid our debt. We're free to go. Jesus paid our debt in full when he died on the cross. He purchased us, redeemed us, brought us back to him, purchased us with his blood, shed on the cross for us. Jesus paid for our sins long before we ever committed them. We see that in Romans 5, 8. But God commended his love towards us in that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. So long before we were ever born, Jesus paid the price for our sin in full. So don't wait until you overcome an addiction to your financially secure Go to God now. He will help you through anything and everything that you're going through. The gospel can be summed up in John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He didn't come to condemn you. He, he came and loved you. He knew that you couldn't be good enough, that you couldn't be perfect. So he came and died for you. Then Jesus ascended to the Father, ascended up to heaven. We're much like a courtroom. God the Father is the judge. Jesus, the Son of God, is our defense attorney. We see this in Romans 8, 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Also, 1 Timothy 2, 5. For there is one God, and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And Satan is the prosecutor. We see that in Revelation 12, 10. More so the last part where it says, the Satan's the accuser of the brethren, which accuses us before God day and night. So it's like a courtroom. The prosecutor tells God all our sins. As you see here, it says, see what they did? They're guilty. But Jesus, our defense attorney, says, our sins are stricken from the record. Our sins are forgiven. Jesus paid the fine with his blood on the cross. You see it, those sins are stricken from the record. I paid those sins in full. Your salvation is a free gift from God. So receive this free gift that Jesus gave you long before you were born. You know, Jesus wants to save us from the penalties of our sins and give us eternal life. But we must first, individually, receive him. We see in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 9 and 10, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In Acts 3.19, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, 
when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And just like works don't get us into heaven, neither does just knowing who Jesus is. You have to have Jesus in your heart, have a relationship with him. There's a big difference between knowing Jesus intellectually. Like you see there, what the guy has got in his mind, he knows about Jesus being on the cross. But there's a big difference between knowing him intellectually and having a relationship. So you see you got the one guy, he's got thinking about Jesus on the cross, this other one has Jesus in his heart, and they're hugging. So he's got a relationship with him. When you believe with Jesus in your heart, you talk to him in prayer, you read his word, the Bible, you put Jesus first before your family, before your job, before your money, whatever it may be. I like to think of it this way. Our sin put us in a jail, in a spiritual jail. So, where we await our trial, then suddenly the door opens, the jailer says that we're free to go. Someone paid our bail. That was Jesus. Jesus paid our bail. But we're running out of time. Jesus is really coming back soon. So we need to repent. Come back to God while you still can. Repent means to turn away, to change your mind, to do a 180, make a U-turn, change your behavior. It's that simple. It's ABC simple, in fact. A is for admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Admit you can't do this on your own. Admit that you need Jesus. B is for believe in your heart that Jesus is who he says he was. Believe that Jesus died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. Believe that Jesus paid the price for your sins. Believe that Jesus did it all for you. C is call or confess. Call on the name of the Lord. Confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Confess that Jesus is Lord. Confess and repent of your sins. Talk to God. Prayer is a conversation with God. And since He's present everywhere, you can speak aloud, talk in your head. He will hear you. On the screen is a sample prayer you can say, or you can use your own words, just as long as it's from your heart. That's what we've seen in Romans 10, 9 and 10. You gotta believe in your heart. You gotta really mean the words, and when you do, you'll be saved. But it's not about the prayer, it's about making that realization that you can't do this on your own. Prayers, ABCs of salvation, that's just a tool, but it's not what saved you. What saved you is having a complete repentance to changing your attitude and wanting to seek God, wanting to have a relationship with Him. And repentance, you know, it's, it's changing your attitude. I mean, I give this example that if I keep doing wrong to you and keep apologizing, but don't change my behavior, it's not going to mean anything. You're not going to accept my apology after a while. But if I if I say I'm sorry and I change my behavior and I don't treat you like that anymore, then you can even, you can forgive me easier. That's what repentance is: is changing your mind. You know, you're you're changing your attitude. You're not you're not doing repeating the same thing. I mean, we're all gonna mess up, but it's the I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna change my behavior. We have to change the behavior. We're saved through faith in Jesus. It's a free gift from God, 100% free. Don't think that you just gotta be good enough to earn it somehow because you can't. Just repent and believe in Jesus, then you'll be saved. But you must have a personal relationship with Jesus. Go to God first, don't last. Wherever you are, God is with you. God craves you for a reason. When you accept Jesus' as free gift and invite Jesus into your life, and God gives you a new heart and begins to mold you into who he created you to be. God is continually molding us because even though we are saved, we will still sin because we're unfinished. God is working on us. It's like these Legos. I figure this is kind of the best explanation, explanation I can do. You see this Lego, it's just, dump, it's just a pile, right? It's like when you dump a, dump a box of Legos on a table. You're going to get a pile like this. It's not going to look like a house until you start snapping those bricks together. That's what God's doing. He's continually, just like snapping these bricks together, he's continually molding us into who he created us to be. It's not just a dump them out on the table and it's a house. No, it's a pile like that. That's a, just a pile of mess. Now we got to snap the bricks together to make the house. That's what God's doing with us. But read the Bible for yourself, because with all the deception in the world, the Bible is the only truth in the world. You need to know what the Bible says for yourself, because Jesus' return is imminent. He's coming soon. We see all the signs that Jesus talked about happening worldwide. Banks failing, wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places, famines, pestilence. So don't wait, don't put Jesus off. Give your life to Jesus today while you still have the opportunity. Jesus paid the price for you as a free ticket waiting for you to enter into heaven. And all you have to do is take the opportunity today, turn to Jesus, and accept that free gift. And do it before it's too late. You don't have time to wait. Tomorrow might be one day too late. I love you. Jesus loves you. I can't wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. See you tomorrow, God willing. Or maybe we'll see you in the clouds. Have a great day.